Okay, so this is probably going to be partially live, partially not, whatever. Uh, but in any case, um, you might probably wonder, uh, have I not recorded this already? And yeah, I did. Um, it was kind of like, you know, a quick little unboxing before. And this time around, uh, this video will be sponsored by me. This is my projector that I bought for myself after using the previous one that I had for some time and uh, I was really uh, liking it. Uh, now, I will go over this one just quickly and talk about some of the uh, drawbacks and also some of the more kind of improvements uh, over the, for instance, other one that you might uh, consider getting instead of this one. So. Uh, if you're looking at a gaming projector, you're probably looking at two different ones, similar to what I was. Uh, so one would be the ViewSonic, and the other one would be obviously the BenQ. Uh, BenQ has a bit wider array of um, of gaming projectors. This one is probably like the sweet spot of uh, price, though it is expensive. Uh, it is also really good. Uh, obviously, they have more expensive ones and cheaper ones. But when it comes down to having 4K resolution and uh, up to 240 frames, per second with 4 milliseconds latency, this is one of the, the only ones. There is a little bit of caveat there, but uh, those are basically the, like just, just a bit of the specs on the website. Now, um, when it comes down to it, uh, the other one, the ViewSonic that I'm, I was talking about, I was actually considering getting it and it was uh, almost, what is it, like $500 less than this one. Uh, managed to snag deal for ViewSonic when there was the Amazon Prime Day, uh, but ultimately, it just wasn't as good of an experience as this one was and something about it felt off. Uh, some of the problems that I had was with the image being kind of like like a TV static when you had black background uh, when you were looking closer and I think this was affecting how the image actually looked like from further away. Uh, additionally, it, has, it had the uh, chromatic aberration around the letters. Obviously, that doesn't look too great either and was visible. Uh, this one, uh, on the other hand, so I just image sharp uh, without any kind of crap happening. So anyway, let's just pop it open. Um, so yoink. Oh, right, one more. Good. Now, uh, additionally, compared to my previous uh, uh, approach to this, I actually have a little bit more insight to this as I used it for some time. So here we have the uh, SQO, oh, QSO2. Uh, there we go, that's, that was the order of the name. Um, and this is just the Android TV stick. It it does the job, uh, though I do want to say it is sluggish. I'm just not gonna bullshit anyone. It just kind of works slowly. Personally, I don't just, I, I personally don't like Android TV in general. But obviously the projector itself doesn't really have Android TV built into it. That's why we have the stick. And you can obviously upgrade it to something hopefully more powerful in the future. Now, next we have the uh, cable right here. So there we go. And now this is the European plug. And a bit of instruction right here with batteries. And that's about it. Oh, and there is the remote control. So here is our remote. I'll talk about the remote uh, in a moment, uh, a little bit further as well. well. Let's get this out of here. Something fell out. There we go. What do we got here? So this is a folded piece of paper. There we go, caught it. Um, it's just a QR code. Okay, cool. No one cares. Um, taking that off. Hopefully my head ain't getting in the, in the shot. There we go. Kobe. Okay. So right here, we obviously get the projector itself, which like I said, um, did unboxing of it, but let's go over it quickly again. Um, there we go. Uh, so, let's twist it a little bit so it faces the camera. Um, so a couple uh, neat things right here. Um, number one, obviously it's 4K. Uh, it uses DLP for, uh, for LED uh, system. If I remember correctly, it has uh, red, green, uh, blue, blue. 
uh, so the additional blue is for the additional brightness and uh, yeah 4k uh, you won't be getting 240 frames uh, that's at 1080p and one thing that i did learn right here a lot of people tend to um, market this as uh, also supporting 1440p at 120 hertz refresh rate even though you can set it up and computer sees it that way for instance this is not 1440p this is straight up 1080p at half the frame rate uh, there's no bullshitting around that and uh, i will be making a more in-depth review of this later on and uh, this is one of the things that kind of caught me off guard uh, these projectors the dlp ones as far as i know along with the viewsonic and this one do not support 1440p they do not have this resolution just because the system kind of displays it as such you can basically achieve the same kind of results by running upscaling on or super resolution on your computer so your computer would be basically rendering a higher resolution uh, than the display itself supports exactly the same as th this thing can do so like I said, not much of a difference between these. Uh, this is either 1080p or 4K, nothing between. Okay, now, setting it to this side, uh, let's do your that out of the way, and this, and uh, honestly, I don't really care about this one. Uh, so let's talk about the, the remote control. So, um, button-wise, uh, kind of wonky layout, um, something that I, it, it was very hard to get used to when I was using it for... Uh, for like a week um the volume buttons are fine and all that but uh just has kind of wonky layout another thing that i found annoying is the remote control has backlighting sweet um the backlighting only turns on when you press a button now why the hell would i need a backlighting when i press a button if i know where the button is i don't need it to light up so that was kind of an annoying uh part and hopefully maybe there's some kind of settings that i can change for this but i doubt it um, so that's another thing uh, in terms of the feel of the remote control. It does feel premium uh, nice something that uh, ViewSonic even though ViewSonic was lighting up uh, the remote control when just picking it up uh, That was pretty cool. Uh, it felt cheap the button pressing just felt kind of like very cheap here You have more premium feeling for this. So I do want to point that out. It, it feels better than the ViewSonic one um, As it arguably should considering it costs 50% more um, so there we go now another thing that I found uh, very uh, good about these projectors if you're planning to just have it laying on a table or some kind of prop it up on something it has adjustable feet um, something that I didn't really uh, I, I, I used when I had it but I didn't realize that other projectors like the ViewSonic didn't have so ViewSonic would just have uh, like fixed feet so you couldn't like unscrew them and if the surface uh, or whatever isn't necessarily straight or if, if it's laying kind of crooked yeah you're screwed you're just gonna be using some papers propping it up under just so you can get that you know nice stable image and even though uh, most of these projectors including this one and also the viewsonic support uh, keystoning automatic ones uh, because this is a gaming projector it's disincentivized because by using keystoning which uh, was somewhere listed i think um you're getting higher latency and obviously for gaming which this is literally it's in the name right here uh gaming projector you sacrifice the experience the the insane like snappiness of the image the latency uh for the 2d keystoning obviously if you don't have a way around it you need to have 2, 2d keystoning that's fine you can use it right uh, but just know that you will go from uh the lowest of like 4.2 millisecond latency to 16 milliseconds i think uh something along those lines so you're basically quadrupling your latency at that point uh for e2 2d keystoning so in general it's incentivized that you don't use keystoning and just try to align it correctly so the image is uh, basically straight on your wall or whatever you're projecting onto without the use of keystoning. That is the optimal solution. Now, um, additionally, we do have the little uh, thingy thing here for our uh, Android stick. If you want to use that, uh, you can actually turn that off in the settings. Um, so if you don't want to use it, that's fine. You can turn it off in the settings so the projector doesn't actually try to look for it. Otherwise, it will give you a pop-up that it just doesn't detect it or something along those lines. Um, it might get annoying, uh, specifically if you're using it with your computer or something like that. And you probably won't care about this. 
and additionally because it's uh, Android uh, based TV stick, uh, it's really freaking annoying when it comes down to like trying to install applications uh, from side loading applications onto it as plugging in a uh, USB stick. I didn't, uh, I had problems with mine the first time around, so I don't know if I can plug in my USB somewhere here and it will deliver the data to the stick itself um, because I had it plugged in like the power was plugged in separately for some reason I didn't want to like load at the beginning through this um, so uh, with that being said uh, even if you can plug in the USB Android is annoying and will usually hide APKs from the USB that you have uh, set APK on which is absolutely infuriating so the only way you can get APKs on Android Shady TV is by just uh, downloading a browser on uh, through the App Store on the stick itself on the Android TV and then downloading the application through that browser because if you plug it in through a uh, through USB uh, with already, you know, easy downloaded application. Uh, yeah, no, 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 you're not supposed to do that. Uh, we don't allow it at Google. So yeah, they're just going to literally hide the application, which is infuriating. So there we go. Now, a um, couple more things. Um, we have uh, our focus lens or focus wheel right here and zoom one and the throw ratio is I don't actually remember the specific numbers but I was getting about 150 inches from about two and a half to three meters away uh, so that was a pretty decent uh, throw ratio obviously for my uh, room where I was using this it was kind of like smack in the middle of the room um, not to give me that nice 100 and actually about 33 inch uh, size screen that was three meters uh, wide uh, and it looked phenomenal sharp vibrant bright uh, so yeah that's one of the reasons why I'm picking this up because I feel like the image just looks significantly better okay now I think that's left to say oh one more thing because everyone kind of uh, talks about this one uh, the projector comes uh, i don't know if it's like marketed somewhere right here uh no it's not uh it comes with the uh settings x change that's kind of uh, how it's named and uh basically what it allows you to do is go on their website which i could possibly do maybe not i have my keyboard unplugged i would kind of show you on the monitor but uh yeah you can go to their website and look for the settings exchange which is what they kind of made it so you can easily download profile settings for the projector itself to easily allow you to uh, have specific profiles that will hopefully quotation mark look best for the selected game pretty cool now what isn't cool is how pathetically vague the library is and annoyingly shitty it is um so in terms of games for PC, uh, it supports only like maybe 10 games. Uh, other ones that you might want to try uh, are basically for like consoles and the console versions don't have files for you to download. So you're stuck with uh, typical ones like Elden Ring and uh, just literally like less than 10 games, I think. Uh, and games obviously that you might not be playing at the moment. So I don't know why it's not open to the public so everyone can create those files and download if, if it is. For the love of God, I cannot find where I where I can download these files, uh, so I can easily change it. Uh, so yeah, I just wanted to point that out because it's something that I was excited about, but in reality, you will never use it as it's absolute dog shit. Um, and another thing that is dog shit on here, uh, just without a question, is the speakers. So we have um, what is it? Uh, Trevolt um, sound, which you can see right here. Um, Superior sound by Travolt. Oh, well, if Travolt, Travolta's way of superior sound is what we have right here, then it's pretty shit. Um, and there's a couple problems that I've had with these speakers. Uh, number one, they just sound tinny uh, and garbage. Number two, the volume. If you go from like zero to one, it starts uh, already too loud. And then from one to like 10, it doesn't get that much louder. So that is basically no sound to sound uh, when you go from zero uh, volume to one it's a baffling like jump of volume and then anything from uh, from there on to the end it's not that much more volume comparatively to like the first step uh, so that's another thing that is annoying if you want to listen to this in a uh, like on a quiet environment uh, and you really want to tone down the you know the sound of this you can't you either have like a too loud of a sound or 
or, or nothing. And talking about sound, the actual sound profile of the projector, it's pretty loud. That is undeniable. It's something that people, most people actually talk about, uh, but it is allowed. Uh, specifically, the DLP uh, shifting in here is unbearably loud. That's one of the reasons why I was primarily running this at 1080p. Uh, number one, because I get much better frame rates and uh, as in the refresh rate of this projector. And number two, uh, it's not as loud when the DLP chip doesn't need to do the shifting. So you kind of cut out some of the noise. And the noise was at about uh, 40 decibels, if I remember correctly. I did have it recorded. And honestly, I can just kind of probably turn it on right now. Let's grab the cable. So I'm gonna plug it in right away and turn it on. And I do actually have a noise meter right here. So let me just kind of actually find it. Where did I drop it? Uh, uh oh, where did I put it? Am I blind? I had it somewhere here. Bear with me while I uh, get my brain checked, considering I genuinely cannot find the the little box. Is it in here? No. Seriously? Okay, I am having a bit of a mental dysfunction right here. Hmm. What the hell? Um, so in any case, I guess I'm not going to be finding the, the little meter, considering I have no clue where the box went. And I was pretty sure it was here. Oh wait, found it. Yep, there we go. I'm old. Okay, so before I turn it on, meaning the projector, I will first measure the the sound of it. So um, I to place it a little bit further away. Technically, we should be measuring this at about a meter away. Um, yeah, no, I don't have a meter, uh, barely maybe. I mean, that's like half a meter to be honest. So yeah, we're gonna be doing half a meter away. Let's turn it on. Okay, so this is the noise floor right here, 37.3. So that is as quiet as it went, uh, as you've seen, uh, it wasn't going any lower than that and kind of stopped and chilled it down when I literally stopped the breathing. So now let's plug it in. There we go. So it is plugged in right now, um, as you can see right here. And I'm just gonna power it on. So um, this right now being, what was it? So it's uh, 10 decibels higher about. Uh, this is without the DLP chip running right now. This is just uh, straight up fan only. And by the sound, this is the like quieter profile fan. So the, the thing is most likely in the setup stage right now. Let's see if we can get it to actually display. Yep, so you can kind of see it is trying to do a setup. Now let me just quickly try to 
and get actually I need batteries for this. There we go. So apply, plopping the batteries in here. Let's get that going. Of course I dropped one. Okay, so we have batteries in. Um, lighting, anything? Oh, there, there it is. Uh, it probably might not be very visible. Let's see. Oh, there we can see it. So yeah, um, right, I was pressing OKs and stuff and uh, went a little bit forward through the setup. Um, now let's try to find focus on here. Okay, there we go. Uh, plug in SQO stick, uh, no thanks. Uh, no thanks for the hot key stoning. For the best gaming experience, we suggest setting key stoning to zero. Yep, yeah, that's that's what it was. Uh, welcome to BenQ X Series Gaming Projector. Yeah, cool, cool. And now uh, oh, we got the nice little logo, and that's about it. Uh, okay, so, so it looks like it's not gonna actually turn on the DLP right now as I would need to plug this in so you know what I would do it but I just realized I don't have a screwdriver to actually plop this open like this. nope I'm not gonna be doing it like this so yeah um, it's basically I'm gonna I have to sum it up at this as I won't be able to actually uh, screw it in right now as I don't have a screwdriver uh, with the stick obviously it would turn on Android TV and that would automatically I believe run at 4k meaning it would be turning on the DLP chip right here and uh, at that point you would be able to hear the sound of it uh, but believe me um, I'm speaking here from experience as I did use this uh, what you've seen right now the 10 decibel uh, difference right here was just with the fan when the dlp chip uh, turns on it might not go that much higher on the on the actual meter right here maybe like five decibels at max i would assume but the problem is with the sound profile of it it's an annoying sound profile it's like this uh, electric buzzing noise um and uh yeah it's it's not a very fun thing and because it's louder than the fans uh, and it's already a relatively uh, loud projector you might find it very distracting when trying to watch some content and this thing is relatively close to you as it was to me i was about a meter away in my house uh, from it so yeah that, that's not very fun experience when you're just hearing this like buzzing noise in your ear um so i yeah, just want to point that out as this is one of the biggest drawbacks of this projector personally i i'm planning to build a box around it in a way kind of like a hush box so I don't hear it uh, and I'm planning to mount it onto the ceiling so it will be further away than it was by default uh, when I was using it for the uh, first week so yeah just kind of wanted to point that out there uh, but other than that the image which is something that you will care about the most most likely with the projector is phenomenal and this is uh, the reason why I decided to spend actually more on uh, on this projector rather than the view sonic and uh, um, if you're planning to pick it up uh, either one of those i just want to point that out the viewsonic is already a fantastic projector as well i found it just that the colors and the image quality had something wonky with it that that, you, that was bugging my eyes personally i don't know what it was i can't really pinpoint it uh, but i i do want to mention uh, why i'm why i went for this one and uh, in terms of image uh, quality brightness uh, hdr as well uh, this one wins and just takes the crown and that's what I really care about so that's why I swapped to it and uh, keep in mind when going for the ViewSonic if you're planning to there are two versions there is the X1 and X2 um, both look identical uh, but the X1 is, um, is a normal throw uh, ratio projector so you will need at least like four meters of space to get a 150 inch screen while this one basically does this at like nearly half the distance 
uh, and uh, so does the X2. X2 is also a short throw uh, projector, just like this one. So remember, X1 is not a short throw, X2 is. And uh, if you really are constricted with space, uh, you probably will be looking for either well this or the X2 specifically. And I believe X2 is actually more expensive than the X1, while not really uh, differing all that much from uh, from the X1. So there's like almost no difference between X1 and X2, apart from the lens obviously being different for the short throw ratio and uh, the projector being just a bit different size uh, weight because of the uh, lens and, uh, and the throw ratio. Other than that, the refresh rates, image qualities and all that stuff should be about the same between the X1 and X2. Um, and if, if you're gonna be paying similar price uh, for the X2 as you can for the BenQ, I would probably suggest picking up the uh, this if you don't mind the uh, the DLP or if you're primarily going to be using at like 1080p or 1440p uh, this, this projector then you don't get to hear the whine of the DLP and at that point they're about even uh, in the sound so yeah, I uh, highly recommend this one. It's a fantastic projector uh, I've used it and like I said, I literally picked this one up for myself. It's not a it's not like a you know cheap little purchase um so yeah i find this to be a phenomenal uh piece of hardware so, and yeah it's probably going to swap out my tv for the most part specifically for gaming so yeah i recommend it and uh, if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit like subscribe and thanks for watching